before we begin, do you have any questions from the previous sessions? Have you all completed your hands-on? Any questions from the previous topics? Hi, Preeti. Actually, I joined today and mm -hmm. I saw uh, two videos of demo lectures and first Git lecture. Also, I uh, half completed second lecture, but not yesterday. So, That's I great. will complete. No problem. Here we'll be starting with a new topic. So, you can cover that uh, after this class and get back to me for any queries you have. Okay, great. Thanks. So, let us begin with the today's topic. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, we'll be starting with something called branching. Yesterday, we have theoretically discussed what a branch is, right? Let me just give you a walkthrough about this. Branch is nothing but you can imagine like a virtual layer or virtual folder, right? So, it will help you have to have multiple development, parallel development. Like, already there is a default branch called master branch or the main branch. Whatever changes you have done till now, like whatever files, whatever commits you have done are all set to be on master. Suppose you have another requirement and you want to develop that parallelly, instead of messing up this master branch, you could create another branch, which is a copy from master and make your changes here. So whatever changes you make here on this new branch will not be visible to the original one and so on. So you can have parallel development. It can be helpful for making releases, uh, to maintain versions, you can use this concept of branch, right? Now, let me show you the branch. Till now, whenever you run the status command, you'd be seeing something like branch. Let me show you git status. See, it says on branch master. So we are on branch master. That's a default branch or the main branch. If you want to see the list of all the branches, git branch, only one branch is there, master branch as of now. Let's suppose I want to create a new branch from this master. So how do you do that? This is the command. Git branch, new branch name is let's say B1 master. This will create a new branch called B1 from master branch. Here master branch is called the parent branch or base branch, whatever you call it. B1 is a created from there. Means B1 will get all the files, all the commits, whichever they're on master, right? So. Let me run this. Now, if you see git branch, it will list all the branches. Now, B1 is also listed. But star asterisk symbol indicates you are on master branch. Suppose I want to switch to some other branch. Like, let's say I want to go to B1. Git checkout B1. That will help you switch the branch. Now, you are on master branch. Uh, sorry, B1 branch. If you want to make sure... Again, git branch, it will list the branches and star asterisk symbol is on B1, means you are on B1. Means if you run git status, see on branch B1, whatever commands you run from now onwards will be applicable on master. LS of master, right? Git log, if you see this is, sorry, git log, LS of B1. Similarly, git log means it will show the log of B1. Right? So... Or everything is applicable or set to be on B1 branch. So you got everything to comments to files from master. Shall we create some file, new file on B1? Good to go? On B1? Yes, I have these two files. Now let me create a new file called file 3. And here I would say, okay. So again, the same old story. What would be the status message telling us now? Untracked. Untracked. untracked file because it's a new file it will be shown as untracked right so see but the difference is on branch b1 but the same concept untracked what you should do you should come git commit git add first add it to the staging area okay. now again if you see the status it says changes to be committed see here it symbol also changes as a now commit git commit minus m let's say b1 changes or something like this right done now if you do git status it's clean 
right? And if you do ls three files, and if you check the log, log of b1, obviously three commits. Do you think you have this new file or uh, do you think you, do you have this new commit on master? New file, new commit, will they be available on master? Uh, no. No. Definitely no. Let us see. Let's go to master. How to switch the branch? What is the command to switch the branch? You are on B1. To switch the branch, git checkout. Master. This will help you switch the branch. So now switch it to branch master. So you are on master branch. Okay. And if you see here, ls. Okay. Files of this. And uh, no third file present here. Also the log of master. Right. When you do log, it will show the log of the branch on which you are on. Suppose you want to check the log of some other branch. Give the branch name here. The log of B1 has got third commit, which is not present in B1. Are we good and clear? Yes. Right? Yes. So now let's say assume this B1 is like a draft. I made it for temporary purpose. I have developed something there. I'm done with my changes. Now I want to integrate changes from B1 to master. How to integrate changes from one branch to another? And what is that called as? Integrating changes from one branch to another? Merge. Right? Integrating changes from one branch to another is called merging the changes. Right? So let us see how to merge. Git merge B1 master. B1 is the source. Actual syntax is this is the syntax. Git merge source branch and the destination branch. Right? So source is B1, destination is master. Now if you do, it says it was merged. Now if you do ls, yes. Okay, git log one line. It will show the log of master. And if you want to see the log of B1, right? You got everything now copied, right? So automatically you will not have changes visible from one branch to another. If you want to get the changes or integrate the changes, you have to do git merge Merging. branch and destination branch. Understood and is that clear? Yeah, it's clear. I didn't get, uh, so command used to create the branch. I didn't... Uh... Got that point, yeah. It must source branch. Source means no, no. You want to, to create the branch like a B1 you created from the master, right? That's the point. First point. Git branch, new branch, parent branch, or new branch or base branch. This is the point. Yeah. Okay. So if you give command like that, so one more branch will be created. That's it, right? B1 will be created from master. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any more queries from anyone? Okay. So, uh, this is how we merge it, right? We got the changes integrated into the branch. This is how, in reality, you may uh, develop something on a particular branch later on. If you want to integrate, this is how you can use. So, simple branching and merging feature, right? Uh, let us look into another use case. Good to go for the next use case or any questions from anyone here? If we suppose only use git branch, so it will just show the all branches, right? Git branch will list all the branches available in your repo, like this. And we add git branch plus um, B2 master, it will create B2, right? Yes, from master. Oh, thanks. Hi, Does the merge will create a new commit ID? Okay. Let's see. Yes, obviously, right? You got a merge. This new commit ID is added in the current branch, isn't it? Copied from B1 source. Yes. Whenever you merge, new commit ID will be created, which is a copy from the source branch. That's what integrating changes means. You get the changes as well as the commits. Understood?
So this is how you see the branches. Next, let us take up another use case. Here I am going to create some file on master. Okay. Let me create a file called file 4.txt. I am adding some dummy line like new file on master branch. Okay. Now what should we do? What will status message tell us? File will be created. Untracked. untracked, right? Because it's a new file, it's like untracked. So what you should do? Get add. Get add. And also I would like to comment. So get comment minus M master branch changes. Okay. Now if you do get status, short Okay, so four files were there. Perfect. It was all good. And if you see this fourth file, and if you see the log, fourth commit. Right? Do you think this fourth file, fourth commit, available on B1? Do you think so? Not in my master branch. We need to give merge command. Not in master branch. These are all in master branch only. We are but in we use more. My question is, fourth file, fourth commit are available on master branch, right? Will they be available on B1? No. No. All oh, right. Until you merge, until unless you merge, you don't have them. Okay. Also, there is a difference in the branches can be seen with get a diff master B1. We re do you remember we use diff command to check the unstaged changes of the file? This is another way to use the diff command. Okay, you can check the differences in the files. Like it is showing like this particular line is added on file four on this master. Okay, fine. Let's say I have the new comment, new uh, things on master. That's fine. I want to go to B1 now. How to switch the branch? Check out. Exactly, get check out B1. So now I'm on B1. See, at the back end also, you don't see fourth file. Okay, you don't see fourth cup. Okay, fine. I don't have this, that's okay. Now I have some requirement here. I need to create some file here. I'm going here and creating file 4.txt. I'm not bothered whether this file is there or not. I'm just creating some new file. Okay, so what would be the message now? What should we do? Where is this file, file 4? B1 branch. And B1 it's... Branch. Uh, and which area? Working, working directory. directory. It's in a working directory, untracked. So I would like to add this file. Yeah, then later on what we should do? Add and... Submit. Submit. Maximum, let's say... B1 modifications. Okay, some commit message. Done. So, okay, I'm not bothered about whether this file is present or not. I have done parallel development. Parallel development is opening on master branch and also on the uh, B2 branch, uh, sorry, B1 branch. So, okay, I'm done with the changes. Now I want to go back to master. How to go back to master? Check out. Check out. Check out. B1. Master. Oh, we are already on B1, right? You want to go to master. Okay. Switch to master. Okay, fine. Now I want to integrate changes from B1 to master. Because I made some changes there, I'm done. I want to integrate to the original branch. So how to do this integration? What is that called as? We already did. Git merge. So merge. Mine would be git merge source code B1 to master. So if I run this, what happens? Will this work fine? What happens now? Oh, file, file for oh, maybe. What happens now? Can we it do might, it? Might override or it might create uh, two sub files for file four. Or give us uh, some error, maybe. Okay. Why? Why do you think so? Why this happens? Two similar file names. Okay. So you mean to say there might be an error, there might be overwriting. If it overwrites, there is no point of using it, right? It shouldn't do that. 
Next thing, it should not ignore those changes. It should integrate. But Git is also, after all, a tool. Git doesn't know which changes to give. It will have a confusion and it will give, it will give us a conflict. See? Earlier it worked fine, but now automatic merging failed. Automatically it cannot merge. Conflict. Automatic merge failed. It cannot merge automatically. You have to fix the conflict and then commit the result. Do you know the reason for conflict? Similar file names. File names. So majority of the people would say same file name. Is it just because the same file name? It's not just because of the same file name. To some extent, it's correct. It's one of the reason is to file name. And also okay. there are a few more things which leads to this conflict. So let us understand what is happening at the back end because generally when we say conflict, people think it's just same file, but not exactly. So let's see what happens. Here I am writing what are all the steps we have done. Master branch, B1 branch, initially on master, the file 4 was created and commit A was made. I couldn't refer that alphanumeric ID, so I'm referring it as A. So yeah. now tell me, is this commit A available in the B1 branch? Yes. Is this available? We created the new file though. Yeah. Ah, we created new file on master and commit A was made. Is this available on B1 branch? No. Definitely no, it is not there. This is no. what we did. We just created file 4 on master, made some commit A, it's not there. Then I went to B1, then I made again file 4 and made another commit B. Correct? This is what we did. Yes. And is yes. this commit B available on master? No. Right, this is also not available. Okay, this is what we did. Then what we did, we were trying to integrate changes from one branch to another, from source branch. Here, source is master B1 branch. And this is the destination branch. We are merging. We are merging means you bring changes from one branch to another. If you see the snapshot or commit history of file 4 here, it is simply B. If you see the snapshot of file 4 on master, it is simply a, imagine like two boxes. Merge means this box should come and sit here. You may open. Merge means B should come and sit here. Does it mean that it should override the existing one A? Or else, because it's already there, should it ignore B? Or should it keep both? Three conditions, three use cases, right? So Git doesn't know what to do. If Git ignores, therefore there's no point of using Git. If Git is ignoring the new changes like B and keeping only A, no point of using Git, right? Also, similarly, if it overrides A, no use. So whether to keep both, it doesn't have clue. So Git can't decide which changes to keep and it arises conflict. Conflict is a way it's informing you. Okay, this is the case. It's after all a tool. It is not a decision maker. It can't decide which changes to keep. You created those files. You are the owner. So you should decide which changes to keep and you have to proceed. But but let's stick to why the what is the reason for conflict? You It is same file. Another reason is Source, source branch, let's say same file, and source branch is missing some commits which are on destination. That's the reason for conflict. Same file plus source branch is missing some commits which are on it. Which, which commit it's missing? Source branch B1 is missing which commit? Commit A. If let's suppose it has got commit A, no point of overwriting, no point of ignoring, right? It would have placed both. But because here source is missing this commit A, you got this conflict. Understood everyone? The logic mm. here, right? Yeah. Because this is missing. I'll tell you another use case, same file but no conflict. Let's assume there is a master branch and B1 is made from master. 
when b1 is made actually we did this similar use case file one is there commit a is there you made a branch then so obviously file one is there commit a is there now i'll make new commit b so now after this i want to merge do you think you will get a conflict in this case same file no no conflict right because a is already commit a is already present in b1 branch so when you merge a and b would come and sit here there is no problem of overwriting or ignoring a and b will come and sit here got it everyone no conflict even though same file so when do you get a conflict same file plus if source is missing some commits which are there on destination then you get a conflict understood got it clear everyone yeah, a little bit. So can we directly uh, create files in a master? Means we are able to create directly. Usually, this won't be happening, I guess, because we usually won't keep similar file names like that. This is very regular. You will okay. see multiple times in a day. Why don't you have same file? That's the point, right? Git okay. is a tool where so you have a team of people. Five people are there. Here I am getting conflict within my local. Multiple okay. people will be there. Mul many people will be working on the same file. Definitely they will get a conflict. Okay. This is the use case. Very common use case. It's not some error or you should avoid. You, you need not avoid. That's good to have. It's informing you. Okay, this is how it is. This branch is having some commits. Uh, should you override, do you want to override? How to fix it, I'll tell you. But this is the reason for conflict. How to handle this, how to resolve the conflict, we will learn. Is okay. this much clear or anyone missing the logic? Should I repeat or can you unmute and speak out? Any questions? or is it... <coughs> Hello. Hmm. I just want to ask, are we, are we able to create directly on master? Means as you write a, a, a box A here, in this master. is local repo. I am talking about local repository. Yes, on local repository you can. But on remote you can't. We will come to remote. We did not go to remote till now. We will run remote support uh, separately. Okay. Now no, I am asking about this chart. File 4A means... File 4 is created on master and commit is made. That commit ID I am referring as A. Commit ID is alphanumeric, right? So right. referring as A. Yeah, I got this. Mm. But we have to create this A from uh, local, then commit to the our branch, working branch, then master, right? Directly you can do it in master. That's what I said. For local repositories, you can do it directly on master. On remote repositories, you can't do directly on master. It's a local repository, so you can do directly on master. Got it, got it. So I'm summarizing it. There is a file for commit A was made, which is not there on B1. Then on B1, I made same file for with commit B. Now if I am merging from source to destination from B1 to master, because commit A is not there on B1, a, B commit only should go into master, but it will override commit A, right? So there is a conflict. And whenever you get a conflict, this is how you will see the file. Can I go back to resolving a conflict? Yes. Yes. So whenever you get a conflict, if you open this file, yeah, file four will have like this. Head means from the current branch. This one from new branch. This is another advantage of using VS Code Editor. You may see the same thing also here. You may see here also the same you will see. See, this is from the current branch. This is from master. Sorry, that's from B1. Now, the advantage of VS Code Editor is it will give you options. Accept the current change only or incoming change from which is coming from source or both. You can decide because you created those files. You are the owner. You can decide. Here, I got a conflict within my local branches. We may also get conflict from other team members. That scenario also we'll discuss maybe tomorrow. But yeah. So you can choose whether you want to keep changes of master only, means current change, 
or incoming changes from B1 because source is B1 or both. You can choose it and edit easily. If you don't use this IDE like Visual Studio Code, you can use some notepad and you can see the changes this way. Am I making sense? Yes. Right, that's another advantage of using VS Code Editor. So anyway, I want to keep both, so I'm choosing it. Done. Save the file. Whenever you make a change, uh, any change in Git, what you will do? What you should do after making some changes? Editor. Sorry. So what you should do? Commit. Get Commit. Minus AM because it's modified. Conflicts resolved. Some message like this. This is how you resolve the conflict. Edit the file with the changes you want to keep. Like you put the changes whatever you like to have and commit the result. That's it. Conflicts is resolved. If you see the status, it is clear. So now this file four on master is having both the lines because that's uh, how sorry, I want. Uh, uh, sorry for the interruption. I have one down. Yeah, please. Uh, maybe it is out of the track. Uh, but the concept is like, you know, for example, when we are uh, pushing the code into the master, right, from local repository to the GitHub. Mm -hmm. So uh, just need to understand the flow. Like uh, first, uh, once PR is raised, okay. So they have given some comments. See, Aditya, first thing, just now I mentioned, I'm showing the conflict on local. We did not get code to remote it. Okay, we did not start remote repository set. PRs, okay. remote repositories, we did not get into that yet. I'm talking about conflict on local. We This is conflict which I'm getting in my local. We will also get a conflict on remote with other team members. That also we'll see in the next session. That's what I mentioned sometime back. You're talking about, I understood your question. You raise a PR and you push the changes. So how do you resolve the conflict? No, no, not uh, resolving the conflict. Just uh, that is why I said that maybe it is out of the track. Only the simple basic doubt is whether we need to first give the comments and then uh, push to the push the updated code, or we have to push the updated code and then we have to give the comments. Actually, the thing is, you will uh, always make changes on some other feature branches, not on master. Okay, Correct. locally Correct. you do this and push to remote. Okay, in a feature branch. So on remote, you raise a PR from feature to master. Correct, okay, correct. When, you, uh, when you raise the uh, PR there, you may get a conflict. It would be resolved there. Correct. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll take this part uh, in the next session once we go to okay. remote uh, so that everyone will be on the same page. Sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is how you resolve the conflict. Okay, so Git is a tool. It cannot decide which changes to keep. So it will throw a conflict which you have to resolve and fix it. Now this file on master is having both the lines. Do you think this file is having, uh, I mean, the file on B1 will have both the changes or like what changes would be there on B1? Anyone? Not changes in master, only B1 changes. Let's see how to switch to B1. Check out. Did you check out. Did you check out B1. Okay, we switched to B1. See, this is having only zone because we merged on master. We did not merge on B1. So B1 will not be affected. Right? Yes. Right. So. master will be affected where you have much and also uh, i'm just going back to master you can check out master um git log one line a brief log of master see this is added when we resolve the conflict so whenever you merge with conflict or with conflict a new commit id will be added always so this is the concept of branching, merging, without conflict we have seen, as well as with conflict, right? Two use cases we have seen. We have to see conflict on remote repositories also that we will take once we start remote repositories. So is everything clear with this part? Branching, merging, merging with conflicts? 
Yes. So we'll go to ask you. Uh, yeah. when we use master branch, so okay. we don't. We did not use the merge command, right? For merging in master. We did right. Just now we did. We did from B one to merge yeah. B one to B master. B one to master. This is what we. Yes, but only for master we only use commit, right? We merged it. Git merge B1 master. When we merged it, we got a conflict. Then we committed. We saved the, we made changes to that file for and we committed. Yeah. Means. Okay. Got it. Got it. Means no, we, don't, we, are... we don't need the master to means use merge again. Right. Only for master. We only use commit for master. When we solve the uh, conflict. See, Commit command is applicable to the branch where you are in. Yeah. We are on master. We merged on master, right? And then, then we got a conflict. Our file has got different changes. We made mm -hmm. changes to the file and we committed. That commit will be applicable to the branch master because I'm running them from master branch. All right. Got it. Got it. Actually, what we thought is like uh, there is a few changes, uh, like few options they give, right? Like uh, fix one conflict, two conflicts, and fix both or something like that. So I thought uh, it's merging in both sides, the conflict. Yeah, that's the only question. Conflict will happen on the destination branch where you're okay. trying to merge. Simple logic. You are okay, doing it merge source branch destination. Always destination branch would be effective, isn't it? When you okay. merge with, you are trying to bring changes from source to destination. Okay. See, it's not destination is uh, sorry de source to destination. Destination is affected. It's not that source is also affected. Your destination branch would be affected. You got a conflict on destination branch. You are seeing changes on this file for on destination branch, which is master. Here you will see both the changes means. Whether you want to keep changes from both the branches in this file or only the current changes or only the changes from other branch. It doesn't mean that this is impacting the other branch. Okay. Understood? Yeah. Yes. It's about, it's asking about whether you want to keep changes from both the branch in this file in destination or else whether you want to keep only the current changes. But destination uh, source branch will not be affected. That's why we switch it to B1 and check that there. there's no commit or no changes on file 4. Okay. Um, actually, I have one doubt. Actually, in this scenario, actually, uh, file 4 actually created for both branch, right? Mm -hmm. So, the conflict is coming when we are matching. So, that time, who will sit work on this curve? Uh, actually, this both accepted or not like that. That time, if, can you repeat? Yeah, that time, who will actually work on this for uh, actually for both the file, right? For file for on the merging, the conflict is coming, right? So that time, who will work on this? This who part actually. is the owner of the file. Here, I. Uh, here. Here owner I... of the file that people should be fixing right? this. Obviously, that because is. whoever made the changes, they know they can have to decide which changes to keep, yeah. which changes to ignore, whether to keep changes from both the branches, they know. So whoever created this file, whoever working on the changes will fix it. Here it's my only, like my only changes, it's a local. So I decided when yes. we are working on remote, I may get conflict with some other team member. So we will discuss, like team members who got a conflict will sit, discuss which changes to keep, which changes to ignore, and they will decide what changes to keep in the file. Yeah, different different people will sit to sit work together and then fix this, right? If it is a conflict between two different people. Here I got conflict within my changes, so I resolved it. Yeah. That's what is on remote. We will discuss those scenarios in the next class. Yeah, yeah. This remote side is this a different scenario, right? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thanks, okay. So let us now go to the next concept called stash. What is this stash? To understand this, let me take a simple use case. Suppose you are having some files in a working directory, like file one, file two, you have modified and you you are making you are developing uh, some feature here. You may change this to this. Then I got some other priority tasks. I should commit this file three and I should push to remote. 
some priority tasks I got from my manager. Like I should make some changes here and push to remote immediately. But whenever I'm committing and pushing this to remote, always it will show me unstaged changes in file uh, in the working directory. Correct? There'll be always this unstaged changes. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, it's always a good practice to keep your repository before you uh, commit or push to remote. So, but these file one, file two, I can't push, I can't commit them because they're halfway done. They're incomplete. At the same time, I can't discard them because like I uh, told you, it's like halfway done. I can't discard them as well as I cannot commit them because incomplete code commits shouldn't happen. So what to do then? I can keep these unstaged changes on hold. Means I can move them to some temporary virtual selves. Right? Which is called stash. And your repository becomes clean. Okay, so you can come in and execute other priority tasks. And once it is done, if you want to continue the incomplete work, you can unstash, get the changes from this temporary shells, which is called unstash. That's a simple concept. But again, there are multiple ways to do that and all. So any unstaged changes can be moved to temporary virtual uh, shells. Okay, and later on, you may get them back to work on it. This is what stash and unstash does. Let me show you practically so that it makes more sense. Um, let me check. You can do it on any branch. I'm on master anyhow. Let's say file one. Okay, I'm adding some line like work in progress. Okay, we may say it's about some changes I'm doing here also. Here it's empty, let's say, but it's two files. As discussed, let's suppose I have these two files, unstaged changes. At this point, what will git status tell us? Unstaged. unstaged, right? It's not a new file. File is already there. So only modification. So unstaged. See? Changes not staged. Unstaged. Okay, fine. Let's suppose you want to... Uh, keep the repository clean. But I don't want to commit them, add them because they are incomplete. So I want to put them on hold. What you can do, git stash. See, it tells you all the work in progress was moved. And if you do the status, see, it's clean. Second line is not there here. Here, first line is not there. Do you mean that you lost them? They were not lost. They were kept on temporary shelves. How do you see that? git stash list whenever you do stash a stash number will be generated like this okay stash number if you want to see the changes it is so show stash number right so it will tell you what changes were stashed on which file see file one file two it will show you what changes were stashed they were kept on the temporary shelves Okay, now if I want to get the changes back into the working directory to continue the incomplete work, how to unstash? Git stash pop stash number. This command will unstash the changes back to the working directory. Okay, it will bring the changes back. Git stash pop stash number, it will bring the changes back. And also, it will drop it. It will clear it from the uh, stash list. It will clear from the temporary shelves. Let's see. See, it says that changes were back. Here you can see. See, you got the second line here. Here you got the first line. And changes not staged message. Also, it dropped this. Means it is cleaned from temporary shelves. If you do stash list, nothing. That's a simple way to stash and unstash. Are we clear with this stash and unstash? Can you yes. just run once again stash command? Can you just repeat this means little bit stash? Stash, this is the stash command. Whatever okay. major changes will be moved to temporary shells. If okay. you want to see what are on the temporary shell stash list, it will show you the stash number. 
git show stash number will show you what are all the changes that were stashed. Right? And then right. uh, git stash pop will bring the changes back to working directory as well as delete from the stash shelves. That's why when you do stash list, it shows empty output. Mm -hmm. Got it now, clear? Got it. Everyone, are we good? So, yeah, that's how you stash. Uh, let me stash again, okay, so that you can feel comfortable by uh, seeing again. See, git stash, all the changes were stashed. Here you see everything is gone. And if you see the status now, it's clean. Okay, and if you see stash list, it will show you it is on the temporary shelves. If you want to bring back, what are we doing? Or how to unstash? Stash pop. Pop, 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 stash pop. The stash number. There is another method apply on the stash number. What is the difference between pop and apply? Both will unstash, bring to the temporary shells, but mm -hmm. apply will not delete from the temporary shells. It will keep it on the temporary shelf as well. See, earlier it showed like dropped, but now you don't see that message. Do you notice that? It is also on the temporary shelves. See? Got the difference between pop and apply? Yes. But why do you need this apply? Why should you keep it on temporary shelves? In case later on, if you want to continue this incomplete work on other brands, this can be helpful. Got it? Actually, it will save on the temporary folder permanently, right? For the supply command. Sorry? Uh, it will save ah. on the temporary folder, hmm. right? For yes. permanent. It so will not get... delete from the temporary shelves. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. Hmm. Later on, if you go to other branch, if you want to get these changes, you can unstash there and work on it. That's hmm. the usage of for the supply. So that you have one copy on the temporary shelves as well. Okay, so now if you see git status, yes, you got the changes. And now you still have this here, git stash list. If you want to uh, delete this, you may do git stash clear. It will delete from the temporary shelves. Right. Again, if you want to stash, get stash. But if you notice, whenever we are doing stash, whatever changes, like I have two files, right, unstashed. Everything was being stashed. But let's suppose you want to stash only a particular file. Right. That's where comes stash minus P. Partial stash or specific stash, whatever you call it. Now it will prompt you on every file. File one, do you want to stash it? Yes. File 2, do you want to stash it? No. Now, if you see, only one file will be stashed. See, file 2 is not stashed. That's how you can stash separately. Also, if you do git stash list. Okay, you can see the stash number. This Git stash list stash number. All right. So... Uh, git status and stash. Let's suppose I want to stash this file to again. Now you may do git stash simply. Anyway, it is another file, only one file, so it could be stashed. Now, if you see status clean and stash list, multiple stashes. Do you see that? Right. 
So if you want to uh, delete any stash, means you can unstash it or else without unstashing also, you, you don't want them, you want to discard them. Git stash, drop that particular stash number. Stash number starts from zero, indexing starts from zero. So zero, and that is dropped. See, stash number moves, like one is forwarded to zero because zero is deleted. It took the place of zero. Right. If you want to drop any particular stash, this is the command. If you want to clear all the stashes, stash clear. Right. Let me just summarize this way. What the stash command will do? Creates uh, cells, stash cells, and put data. Command will move changes from working directory to temporary chips, right? Stash apply, what this will do? This will bring changes from working directory to temporary shells plus delete from temporary shells, correct? No, no, no. Apply will not, uh, not delete. If not delete will not delete pop will delete not delete no? temporary shelves okay pop will do the reverse it will delete right stash list you know stash clear stash p specific for a particular file stash a particular file right and drop will drop this particular stash. Delete a particular stash. Delete a particular stash. Stash clear will delete all the stashes. They will not unstash. Remember, I am not writing anything about unstash. They will just delete. That's it. Understood? Yeah. Stash, pop and apply will unstash. Pop will unstash and delete. But these stash, drop, stash, clear will not unstash. They will just delete it. And stash minus V will stash a particular stash. Sorry, will stash a particular file. Is this clear, everyone? The ways, different ways to stash and unstash? Let me summarize it uh, through the commands. Git stash. Okay, this will move from working directory to temporary shelves. Git stash pop. This will unstash plus delete from temporary shelves. Git stash apply. This will unstash plus will not delete from temporary shells. Right? Git stash p stash a particular file. Stash a file. Git stash drop. You provide the stash number. So delete that stash. Get stash clear. You will not provide any stash number. Delete all stashes from temporary shelves. Right? Got it, everyone? Yes, this is the whole summary of the things. And also, have you noticed we are stashing? Only the unstaged changes. Did you notice that? It's not a new file. Unstashed one. Oh, sorry, unstaged changes. So git stash, all these commands are applicable for unstaged changes. Not for untracked. Can we stash untracked also? New files. Yeah. Yes, you can do. But then you have to do git stash minus u. And this shift. Can you just repeat again? 
unstaged. Right, untracked cannot be. But if you want to stash untracked also, you have to use minus u flag. Git stash minus u. You can try out from your end. Okay, keep some untracked file and do it. It will be like unstashed. It will be stashed with stash minus. Uh, could it please elaborate with git stash apply? Actually, git unstash stash. plus git stash apply. Git stash hyphen louder, please. Git stash hyphen P, you are asking? No, no. Git stash apply. 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 It will unstash and it will also keep it on temporary shells. Means when you do yeah. git stash list, it will show you in the temporary shells also. Yeah, it will be there in temporary shells, but where it where it will be saving, it is there in unstash, unstash right? So it will be saved on working directory or else? Unstash means, first of all, it's doing two things. It is unstashing. It's getting you to the working directory. It's bringing changes to the working directory. As well as it's also keeping them on the temporary shelves. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. Unstash means temporary shelves to working directory. Reverse of stash. Yeah, yes. Got it. So it will be saved on temp uh, uh, working directory. The mm. temporary shells will be there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is about the stash concept. Practice this. It would be interesting for you. Uh, practice this. And there would be a confusion or a question generally in most of the classes whenever we are discussing stash. Um, uh, people would be asking or else they take it into consideration that stash and ignore or same. What is the difference between git ignore and stash? What is the difference? Were they same or how different they are? Yep. In stash content will be changed and in the uh, total file will be changed. See, uh, any more? Okay, any more answers? Let me check other answers as well. So, git ignore is like we use, so that's not like a working, we are not working on it. We are just moving that file, ignoring completely. And this one, we are keeping it to work for. Uh, Pending work we are keeping like in the another uh, branch, I guess. Okay, see, git ignore will exclude the file from tracking. The file will not be tracked anymore. Means if you mm -hmm. ignore file one, it will not be tracked anymore. But here I stashed file one, but even the file is tracked, right? Only certain changes will be stashed. That's all. File will not be excluded from tracking in the stash. That's the difference. Gotcha. Right. So, entire file will not be removed from tracking. File is still being tracked. File 1 is still being tracked. Only certain changes were stashed. Move to temporary changes. That's the difference between ignore and stash. Am I clear? Yes. Okay.
I could see the responses um uh, whoever completed the quiz. This is the yeah. quiz you should go through today. I'm sharing it now. Uh, just go through it. Uh, I went to the uh, quiz yesterday, but I couldn't find some topics that from quiz to from uh, Git. So like Git rebase and... Uh, Git rebase Git, uh, to be covered. We'll cover rebase tomorrow. Okay. okay. Don't worry. Like, yeah, those questions would be like here and there. But okay. yeah, by the time we finish, you will see them. I'm sharing okay. this quiz link in the chat also, in the Zoom chat. Go through the quiz. It will be like a registering the things, reviewing the things, all the questions about stash, try out from your end. New questions, things which are out of topic also will be there, like for you to explore and understand. Okay, okay. go through this quiz. Hands on, go through the hands on. Okay, uh, go follow the Google Drive, complete your hands on. We have the next topic as rebase. Conflicts on remote. Tomorrow we'll be moving to remote. I would like to tell you till now we were still on local, right? We did not go to remote yet. So tomorrow we'll start with the remote repositories as well. Right now we don't have access to the drive, right? Like we are not registered but completely. Whoever registered have got access. All the registered okay. students might have got access. If not, yeah, you, you will get access once registered. Okay. And yeah this is what uh we were still on local we did not go to remote right whatever we were doing till now are still on local we were working on this part right so tomorrow we will take up another advanced concept called rebase and we'll go to remote so i have one question like git is mostly for uh, storing files and moving files here and there like repository so that's the major purpose I guess, right? Maintaining the versions, securing your files. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So go through the quiz, complete your hands-on. And today is the last demo session. Today, by the end of the day, we'll, move, we'll be moving people into private WhatsApp group for hands-on support. So if you have registered and if you haven't moved, uh, let us know by the end of the day. Okay. And anything else you have? Any questions, concerns? <clears throat> I have one doubt actually. Mm -hmm. I, I just I just wanted for session and settle and talk and open it. Any possible to uh... can you check with Mr. Raj who is looking after this trainings? If you have any questions related to the training and all, reach out to this number. You can WhatsApp or you can call, give a call on this number. He can help you with all these details. So for registration process or for any queries, you can reach out to this number. Yeah, sure. Any more questions from anyone? I believe you are all doing the hands-on. Tomorrow, like after rebase, we'll check on remote repositories. And then later we'll start with, I mean, not to tomorrow, the next day we'll be starting with uh, Linux fundamentals or Linux basics. So that's the agenda for this week. Any more questions you have, anything else? In the class, if you are like attentive and if you are regular to the classes, you will understand the concepts thoroughly that will help you for the next level. After the class, also make sure you're doing the hands-on. Okay, that will help you have better visibility on what we were talking. Yes, some questions are not for, I think, uh, in today's topic. So yeah. we can... Tomorrow, right from yes. this yes quiz. yeah once we do rebase those will be answered any questions from uh, a stash you can explore them you yes. can search and find out those answers maybe i have a question so till today i mean uh, we are connecting like i mean, this is the fourth day for demo right yes so unfortunately, I have not attended last three days. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, whether that will be covered. Uh, I mean, these demo classes again will be covered. Or, uh, we'll be providing the... recordings, uh, Anil. You have recorded, all the sessions were recorded. Okay, we'll provide you with the recordings. You can go through them and if any questions you have, you can reach out to us. Okay. If you need to discuss anything, you can give a call on this number. Okay. Have you all completed the quiz, which I shared in the Zoom chat? Oh, no. Let me know once you complete. All right, then we'll close here and we'll continue tomorrow. Thank you all. Have a good day. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.